of the sheep. This parable is not so much about sheep, though, as it is about the Good Shepherd himself, our Good Shepherd, who will not rest until the lost, the last one is found. That's just the way God is. In these parables, the sheep and the coin are to be found. Not because either does anything right, not because they have somehow expressed repentance or sorrow over having been lost in the first place. They haven't somehow repented and changed their behavior or their circumstances, but simply because the one to whom they belong is determined to find them and will not rest until he or she finds the thing that is so precious to them. Like a jigsaw puzzle that lacks the last piece. It must be found. You can't call it done until every piece is in place. Have you ever worked one of those 500 piece jigsaw puzzles? It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of patience. And these parables tell us of the unlimited patience and persistence of God who just won't give up on any of us. Like the value of the coin to the woman, so God values each of us. So God values the ones that we may not value rightly. So when we hear this parable, we often put ourselves in the place of the sheep, which is gospel good news to the extent that we want to receive that kind of patience and grace and salvation. But if we are honest with ourselves and with God, we can remember the times in our own lives when we also have gotten off track, the times when we have lost our way, the times when we have failed to live as God would have us live, the times when we did or said something unkind or failed to forgive, Grudge. We remember the times when we did something self-destructive and hurt ourselves and others in the process. The times when we felt like we just didn't know where to turn or what to do. And so yes, it is good news to know that no matter how far off we may wander from God's way, God is determined to keep calling us to keep working relentlessly to bring us back to God's self. God will track us down and gather us in, no matter how far afield we may have wandered, no matter how much even we may resist. But there's another facet to this parable, these two parables of the lost and the found, that I think we may often overlook, though Jesus makes this point twice. Here, Jesus is addressing the Pharisees, those super religious, pious people who always try to follow the rules, and they are quick to let others know when they have fallen short. Jesus is challenging the grumbling Pharisees, and yes, even us, when we grumble, we grumble about and judge others. Jesus is challenging us to have a heart heart of God for those who are lost. To have the heart of God to really love and serve God is not so much about following rules and making sure everyone else follows the rules as well, but it is about taking part in the patient and gracious seeking and finding, the bringing back in of those people that others would rather write off. Because here is the bottom line. God loves sinners. Here is the bottom line. We are all sinners. And yet we are also all saints by faith in Christ. God loves the sinners and sent his son Jesus to prove it even though it killed him. There are no conditions sinners must meet before God will seek us out and bring us in and put us on the right path, the path that 
leads to God and to love. To grumble because God shows mercy and forgiveness to others is quite frankly a sin in and of itself. That is the Pharisees' sin, which they cannot see. They too were far away from God, but they were lost in a different way. Their outward religious practices made them proud of themselves before God and made them judgmental of others. So Jesus challenges them and us not to judge, but to rejoice. Rejoice, because Christ has come to find us, to forgive us, to bring us back to God and to one another. All of us. A pastor friend of mine told me of a time when he was 12 years old, he was invited to a birthday party. And one of the games they played was hide and seek. He said that he hid so well that no one found him. And then it started getting dark, and he realized at some point that the others had stopped looking, had stopped playing, and had all gone inside to have cake and refreshments. He said he was hurt, hurt that no one had kept looking until they found him. And he said that no one had even called out to say, it's time to go in now. And then when he came out from his hiding place and went towards the house, he said he felt sheepish standing outside the house in the dark, looking inside, seeing the party going on without him. And he hesitated to go back in to join them because he felt as if no one really cared if he was there or not. But rejoice. For God will not give up on us. God continues to seek us. And the good news is this, that even when we feel lost, or when we have hidden ourselves from God, we can be sure that God knows just where we are. And because he has found us with his love, he will never let us go. We do not need afraid or alone. We sometimes talk about the church as God's flock, God's gathered people, for each of us knows what it's like to be lost and found, and we help each other when the going gets tough. We are blessed because God has gathered us in and continues to gather us week after week. And each week we hear again God's word of forgiveness and God's promise, I will never leave you or forsake you. You are mine, and I will be with you to the end of the age. I get a sense, though, that there is a general feeling of lostness in our world right now, and also in our country. Marking the anniversary of 9-11 this past week, in light of uneasiness in the Middle East, violence in our schools and in so many of our cities, hurricane damage, the opioid crisis that has been on the front page, the economic struggles of those who work hard and have trouble making ends meet burden that that can be the high cost of health care. There is this lostness, a burden that seems to come and seems to be in the air whenever we turn on the news or even go downtown and talk with friends. And then there's a different kind of lostness, but it's very real. The lostness we feel, the death of a loved one, or divorce, we're just wondering if we are on the right track in life. And it is so good to know that our Good Shepherd is still out there in the dark, seeking us, determined to bring us all safely home and into the park.
party. Rejoice with me, he says. There is still reason to rejoice. The lost are found. The church is nothing if it isn't about rejoicing, for nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And for that, we always give thanks. During this interim time in your congregational life, we will be engaging in some fun, I hope, and interesting conversations, a time of reflection. And we'll have a chance to think about how will we, as a church, be about the work of seeking and caring for those who are lost? How will we show and tell people through our words and our actions that God's love has found and claimed them? How will we reach out and invite everyone, those who have it together and those who do not? Inviting them all to come and rejoice in the patience and forgiveness and goodness of God. Conversation is just beginning as we look to Christ who we trust will guide us to just where we need to be. Thanks be to God. Amen.